welcome again. This is the third week to the series Meditations in the Word from Psalm 119. Remember that Psalm 119 is an acrostic poem of 22 sections of eight verses apiece, each for the one letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Two weeks ago in the first section, we learned that the person who follows God's word is the person that is truly blessed. Then in the second session, we learned that God's word is the path to purity. This week, we look at the third section of Psalm 119, verses 17 through 24. Let's read them together. Be good to your servant while I live, that I may obey your word. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. I am a stranger on earth. Do not hide your commands from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your law at all times. You rebuke the arrogant who are accursed, those who stray from your commands. Remove me from me, remove from me their scorn and contempt, for I keep your statutes. Though rulers sit together and slandered me, your servant will meditate on your decrees. Your statutes are my delight. They are my counselors. Father, we pray that you would reveal yourself to us, that your spirit would take your word and apply it to our hearts and our minds, that we might be able to gain an understanding of your will for our lives, that you would walk with us and help us to serve you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Years ago, when I was working at the Akron area YMCA, my boss, the CEO of the Akron YMCA at the time, Doug Hole, Cole, used to say, uh, when everybody asked him, how are you doing? He'd say, better than I deserve. I always liked that. I wanted to steal it from him. And it might be that he stole that from Dave Ramsey. I don't know. Dave might have stole it from Doug or somebody else altogether, because Dave Ramsey says that all the time. How are you doing? better than I deserve. I love that statement because it's saying, God has not treated me the way I have merited, but he has been much better to me than that. And here the psalmist is saying, if we're going to obey his word, if we're going to follow him, we need God's help to obey his word. Be good to your servant while I live, that I may obey your word. The psalmist is asking for God's help so that he could obey. He's saying, be bountiful to me, meet my needs, show your favor to me so that I can follow you. His provision and his help are what we need if we're going to be able to follow. Jesus emphasized the same point in John chapter 15. In that passage, he tells us, I am the vine and you are the branches. No branch can bear fruit of itself. It can't bear fruit all by itself. If a branch is severed from the vine, it withers and dies. And you can't bear fruit unless you remain in me. If we remain in Christ, he produces life in us and he produces the fruit. We need his help if we're going to follow him. Furthermore, if we're going to follow God, we need God's help to even understand his word. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. I am a stranger on earth. Do not hide your commands from me. God's ways are so far beyond our ways that we will never be able to totally figure them out. And we can't even begin to understand them unless God reveals himself to us, unless he opens our eyes and helps us to understand. This is exactly the point that Paul was making in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9-14. through 14. Let's read it together. However, as it is written, no eye has, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no humankind mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who loved him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, 
No one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given to us. Then in verse 14, The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Paul is saying the person without God's Spirit, without God's Spirit helping them, will never really be able to understand God's purposes. They seem foolishness to them. They don't want to follow. They are blind. And the first part of this verse it's saying, no ear has heard, no eye has seen what God has prepared for those that, uh, that no human mind has conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. And that's usually where people stop. But verse 10 goes on, says, these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit, that he has shown us these things. So the psalmist is saying, open my eyes that I might see Wonderful things from your law. As we read God's word, his spirit is teaching us and his spirit opens our minds and opens our hearts to the wonderful things that are in God's law. That's why in verse 12 of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul's saying, God has revealed these things to us because his spirit knows these things. And in verse 12, he says, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given to us. God's spirit opens his word and lets us know his promises so that our eyes are open. And then he helps us to follow his word. We need God's help all the time. That's why we need to habitually study God's word. The psalmist says in verse 20 of Psalm 119, My soul is consumed with longing for your law at all time. Saying, I'm overwhelmed with desire. When we taste something good, we want more. I was telling my daughter-in-law just the other day, I can not eat, not eat candy. Uh, it's pretty easy for me to say no to candy. I'm diabetic. I'm not supposed to eat it. But if I have a taste, uh, I want some more. And the worst thing in the world for me is somebody opens up a bag of potato chips. Uh, the old ad, you can't eat just one. And I pretty much follow that. I can do it a whole bag. It's not a good thing. But on the positive note, when we taste the good things that God has for us, we want more. The person who is blessed meditates on God's word Day and night, we are consumed with a longing. Once he, he helps us to see his path, once his spirit opens our eyes to the wonderful things in his law, there is a desire to follow God. And then the psalmist prays and says, Help me, Lord, not to be deterred or hurt by my enemies. See, we need to be aware of enemies of God's word. Verse 21 and following. You rebuke the arrogant who are accursed, those who stray from your commands. Remove me from remove from me their scorn and contempt, for I keep your statutes. Though rulers sit together and slander me, your servant will meditate on your decrees. Your statutes are my delight, they are my counselor. We need to be aware of the subtle influences of the culture around us. We are not aware of how we're being influenced by our families of origin, by the culture in which we live. So many times we think it's God's way just because it's the American way, and it's not always that way. Just because we live in a culture that has had much Christian influence on it, there's much in our culture that is not in line with God's Spirit. We need to beware of the things that would pull us away. Often, when a young Christian or a young person that's been raised in a Christian home goes off to college, they are influenced by their professors and others that would deter them from following God. So there's people who think they know it all. They know better than God. 
I remember when I first became a Christian and I was studying Western civilization at Lansing Community College, we were learning how the Hebrews created God, not how God created mankind. It's how man creates God. The idea of the evolution of God. God didn't evolve. God's always been. But I tell you, it raised a lot of questions in my mind and my heart. In the end, it did me good because it caused me to have to think seriously about whether God was really there and his word is really true. And I became convinced that Jesus is Lord. He's saying, remove from me their scorn and contempt. It's easy to be influenced by the ideas of other people that would draw us away from following the Lord. It's easy to be influenced to disobey God. Jesus, again, talking about himself as the good shepherd in John chapter 10, says that he's the good shepherd. And then he says in verse the last part of verse 4, he says, his sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. And the psalmist is saying here, Lord, help me to follow your word. I need your help so that I have the ability to follow. I need your help so that I understand. I need your help to create that desire. I need your help to take away the scorn and contempt of those around me. And then, Lord, I need your help to be faithful, even when others slander, even when others ridicule. He says, though rulers sit together and slander me, your servant will meditate on your decrees. No matter what other people say, I'm going to follow Jesus. It's like what Joshua said to the people of Israel. You decide for yourself whether or not you're going to serve the gods of Egypt or the gods of the people around you, but me and my house are going to serve the Lord. He says, I'm going to serve the Lord. I and my house will serve the Lord. And that should be our desire. And we need God's help. He says, God, remove those things from me. We continue to look to him, even if others ridicule and slander. We always look to his word for direction. For the last thing he says, the statutes are my delight. They, not the world around me, that doesn't mean we don't learn from all the people around us. But ultimately, the counselor that guides us is the Spirit of God applying the Word of God to our hearts. We need God's help in order to follow His Word. As we seek Him, He opens our eyes and our hearts, and He enables us to follow Him. Father, pray for everyone that turns tunes into this short video that you would draw them to yourself, that you would help them understand your love, that you'd give them a passion to follow you, that you'd help them resist the temptations around them and enable them to live for you always. We pray in Jesus' name. Now may you, great, may you grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.